Well, hey there, it's my favorite listener. You think I'm talking to everyone, but really, I'm talking to you. And I am so excited to invite you into this conversation that I just had with Amanda Jefferson. She is the owner of Indigo Organizing, the creator of the Done With You Digital Organizing Coaching Program, and one of the world's first Marie consultants. A TEDx speaker and a co-host of the Good Enough-ish podcast, Amanda has been featured in Real Simple, Harper's Bazaar UK, and Better Homes and Gardens among others. In this episode, you are going to hear us talk all about the Marie method. And if you don't know what that is, it's the premise of that huge cult sensation book, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up by Marie Kondo. And then we get into how Amanda applies this idea of sparking joy to our digital lives and how we can declutter our email, our phones, and our desktops. Best of all, maybe, (laughs) you are going to hear me get a little painfully honest about how this, decluttering and digital especially, is an area of personal growth for me. By the way, I did want to say that I am a total fuck up when it comes to this, but then I decided it was a bit off brand for the podcast that focuses on positive mindset. So what you're going to hear is Amanda giving me some hard truths about my hard drive. And best of all, you are going to get some great tips on how to declutter your digital and physical world so that you can get some brain space back. Enjoy. It's time to get your head out of your ass and start creating a life of no regrets. Whether you want to lose weight, get rich, or manifest a hot threesome on the beach, you're going to want to turn this up. This is goals, grit, and some woo-woo shit. With your host, best-selling author and professional butt kicker, Una Duncan. Amanda, welcome to the show. I am so happy you're here. I'm like tingling. I'm a little bit starstruck today. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my gosh, that's so sweet. Actually, um... It's very sweet how you ended up on the podcast because um, just the listeners know, Amanda is also my client in my Masters of Fitness Awesomeness program. And uh, do you remember what happened, Amanda? Oh my gosh. So I am not a vision board person, but I'm a tech person. Like I just, I don't like the mess. I don't like all the magazine clippings. I don't like all that stuff, but I am a tech person. And so I decided I was going to make a vision board on Canva. And so I made one and that's really fun because you can pull images from the um, internet. And I'm really into the MFA program right now. I So I put you kind of front and center in the middle of my vision board to sort of represent working out and healthy eating and all of that. And then right next to you, I put a picture representing Spain because it's one of my favorite places on earth and I want to visit a lot more often. And then like the next day, I got an email from you that you were having a retreat in Spain. And I was like, are you kidding me? (laughs) And I don't know, I haven't done hot about it and the money and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, forget it. This was on my vision board. Like I manifested this, I'm going. So I'm going to meet you in person in Mallorca in May. I am so excited for that. And I'm so excited to meet you today. I mean, ever since um I saw that and then and so here's what happened. Another thing on her vision board was her speaking. Yeah. I think and I was like, hey, what do you, what do you speak about? And then she told me that she helps people <laughs> with decluttering and even specifically digital decluttering. And I'm gonna have you yes. uh flesh that out a little bit for us, Amanda. But anyway, I was starstruck because <laughs> oh my goodness, Amanda, there is an area in which I need help. Right now, if I accidentally yeah, hit me. a button and shared my screen with uh-huh. you, uh-huh. which happens sometimes. It would be a disgrace. I've been on meetings where that's happened and everyone in the meeting has gone (gasps) when they see my desktop because it's just layer upon layer upon layer of files that I don't have any kind of organizing system for. Oh, I'm like, I'm dying to see it because I just like, I'm just like, let me get in there. Let me get in there and rearrange and help. And okay. So let's, let's give some context to the listeners. Why would you want to see that horrible mess? Tell us what you do and how you got into it. Yeah. So I own a company called Indigo Organizing. And for the past six or seven years, it's mostly been going into people's homes and helping them to declutter their physical stuff. So I was trained by Marie Kondo. I'm a certified KonMari consultant. Um, and over the years, and one of the things that I, that what I speak about is letting go of the shoulds, because what I've noticed in people's homes is that a lot of times we're not talking about, yes, it's a can opener, but it's, you know, usually about so much more. It's some rules that, that we're trying to follow that society has put on us. So I've sort of transitioned in my business from going into people's homes and decluttering their stuff to two different things, speaking to audiences uh, about how to quit the shoulds and leaning into what sparks more joy for me, because that's what we talk about in Conmore 
Mori, like what sparks joy. What sparks joy for me is tech. I love anything tech. And you're like, uh, no. <laughs> I love anything tech, like figuring out how to use tech to make our lives easier. And I feel like for a lot of people, tech is so stressful and overwhelming and it doesn't make their lives easier. It actually feels like something they're constantly fighting against. So now I am working with clients one-on-one and like right now, if I was in a session with you, I would be like, okay, Una, let me see it. And we would look at it and you would like, you. everybody's like, oh my God, I'm so embarrassed. We would look at it and then we would talk about, okay, what's going on in your email? What's going on in your files? What's going on in your passwords? And like, we do it together. And my clients, they're so funny because they're like, Amanda, is this weird? But this is fun. Like I'm having fun in my email, you know? So it's, it's super rewarding. Oh my gosh. That does sound weird. <laughs> Cause I can't imagine. <laughs> I mean, I even did try the, uh, cause I read, uh, um, Con Marie, sorry, the, the life changing method is con- magic. Yeah, of, I read the, yeah. of course, mm-hmm. I did, mm-hmm. and I love it. I really do love that the ultimate criteria is what sparks joy. That is so in alignment with yeah. my beliefs. Yes, and when I try to do this, the things that spark joy for me are, for example, clothing is one of my areas of clutter. All my clothes that spark joy are my tutus and my <laughs> um, sparkly socks and my wigs. And that would be very appropriate if I was a drag queen professionally. <laughs> but unfortunately, <laughs> what is much more practical is, you know, I live on Salt Spring Island. I need rubber boots and flannel and wool. <laughs> mm-hmm. so, so tell me about the times that um, sparking joy doesn't feel practical or am I getting it wrong? That's what I love about you too, is that you're so like authentically you, you know, and you can see the sparking joy. I mean, when I first, I found you through a Facebook ad and I think it was a picture of you like kissing your bicep. And I think you had like gold high tops on or something. And you could have just wouldn't been wearing like your everyday Lululemon, blah, blah, blah. And I would have just passed you on by, but because I saw like just how authentically you, you are and how much that sparks joy, that's awesome. So I think like you're already just like completely crushing it in terms of like putting your spark joy foot forward. But yeah, you do need those practical things, right? And what sparks joy about those things is how practical they are. You know what I mean? And so those boots and the wool sweaters, like you need those. It's kind of like, like I had um, a client who was a newscaster and she had like, she had to wear her newscaster clothes and she hated them. And then she would have like, she had like an alter ego of like Las Vegas outfits that she would buy just to rebel against those clothes that she had to wear. But I was like, just think about them. Like your scrubs, you were a doctor. Those are the scrubs that you have to wear. They serve the purpose. They're the, what helps you do your job. But like, then let this other spark joy personality, like totally, you know, live live in you. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. And we all have our favorite pair of scrubs or, you know, we have our favorite pair of utilitarian socks and things like that. Exactly. Um, I like that. And I also heard, tell me if this is me projecting, (laughs) I also heard that you're like, well, you should just be wearing your tutu to the grocery store if that's what sparks joy. Do do you think that's also part of the answer? For sure. You know, I went, I spoke at a conference recently where one of the women there had um, like it was a kind of a, you know, co- conference where, you know, business suits and that kind of stuff, but she had orange hair, or like magenta dyed hair and like really loud clothing. And she had actually gotten an award for that. And she was like, this is the first time in my career that I've felt not just like, oh, they're kind of tolerating how I'm looking kind of weird, but also like more even celebrating. And she said, people will call her company and be like, can I work with that cool consultant that has like the cool outfits and the cool hair and being celebrated? So she's actually like a standout in her industry now because she's leaning into that instead of trying to like follow the shoulds of being like, well, I got to be a professional woman with my black blazer. I actually talk in my TEDx about the the black blazer. Like everybody should have a black blazer because that's what's professional. And it's like, really? Like who said that? Like who made up that rule? You know? Oh, I love that you're saying this. So what you're saying is you really can't go wrong by following uh, the spark of joy. You really can't. Um, You, even if it seems impractical, you'll, it's actually going to maybe help you in ways that you don't understand right away. Is, Is that right? Yeah, because I just like, I think that energy attracts people, you know, Mm. just like that Facebook ad that I saw of you, you know, you didn't look like your average sort of 
fitness guru. And that was intriguing and exciting to me. Um, and so I think like when you can be more authentically you, then that just attracts so much that I'm still sort of detoxing from that process. Like I used to work in DC where like my entire wardrobe was black and khaki. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. entire wardrobe and I'm still sort of like I have a nose piercing like you do I got that a couple years ago and that was kind of like my first like foray into like I kind of want to have some outward symbol that like I'm not trying to fit in I'm trying to be different I'm trying to lean more into what feels maybe a little bit more fun or rebellious or different you know so that's what I love about this whole spark joy concept because it's not like Let's make your pantry, you know, let's color code your pantry with a bunch of beautiful, clear things. It's like, no, you know, let's just help you surround yourself with things and people and activities that spark joy for you. And if that's tutus, like, yes, please wear it to the grocery store. <laughs> and I love that you mentioned the black blazer because um, I'm obsessed with uh, capsule wardrobes. This is my most oh, Pinterest thing. I love like too. Googling capsule wardrobe for whatever. And they're always like, you need to ground your capsule with a, a nice starched white shirt and the black pants or whatever. And I'm always like, oh, but I don't like those things. And I, I do. I buy them because I'm like, I need the and I never wear them. Right. You're like the capsule lady told me that I need to buy that. Have you ever gotten a color consultation, like figured out what your best colors are? That's something I'm obsessed with when it comes to capsule wardrobes. Oh, no, that sounds like fun, though. Oh, you'd have to interview her on your podcast. Her name is um, Jeannie Stith. She is the color guru. And you can find out what your complexion, like what colors look the best with your complexion. I am a moonlit winter. So I am wearing a color that is appropriate. I am making doing a violation with the earrings. I should have silver, but I'm wearing gold. But, um, <laughs> okay. Well, let's talk about the shoulds because that you said your, your TEDx talk is about forgetting the shoulds, like the black blazer, like the fact that you as a moonlit winter, that is my new, so that's not on my vision board, dude. Um, <laughs> so you are supposed to be wearing silver, but you're wearing gold. So tell us about the shoulds and what it has to do with decluttering. Hey, dude, if you are enjoying this episode and you have a friend that you think might also benefit from this information, please share it with them. That helps my podcast so much and it's going to help your friend. Share the love. Thanks so much. Yeah, so the shoulds, I mean, I feel like a lot of times and where that story came from, this idea of, you know, the the black blazer, I was with a client and we're decluttering her closet and, you know, we are surrounded by all the yeses and the noes and we get to the maybes and she goes to try on the black blazer and she's like, ugh, I hate this thing, but, you know, I'm going to keep it because, you know what they say, everybody should have a black blazer. And it was just like, what are you talking about? And she probably wouldn't even wear it, but she's like, you got, you just got to keep it because that's what you do. I'm like, well, what if you wore, and she's like a 77 year old retiree. She's like, well, I might need it for a job interview. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like you might wear like a tutu or a red dress or whatever it is, you know? So this idea with, with decluttering, a lot of times we're holding on to things because our house should look a certain way or we should lose 20 pounds you know, we, like I always say, like our closets are talking to us. So like you go into your closet and your closet is saying like, you should lose 20 pounds. You should go back to work. You should do that. And it's just like, get all that crap out of there. Like get so that you can walk into your closet and wear like dress for today, like the person that you are today, you know, and um, just let go of all of these other preconceived notions about what your house is supposed to look like what size your body is supposed to be, what kind of mother you're supposed to be. You know, I feel like women in particular, we've just been kind of pigeonholed into this idea about what our life is supposed to be like. And it's it's exhausting. Wow. Yeah. I actually got chills when you said our clothes are talking to us and they're saying, I mean, I've talked a lot about people. I'm like, if you've got some jeans that are mean to you, you need to get rid of them. I, and I talk about that at all. You should be wearing clothes that make you feel absolutely fabulous in the, in the, at the exact size that you are right now. But I never considered, yeah. And they also say things like, you should go back to work. You should do this. And uh, you're right. That's really, um, that's interesting. Thank you. One of the biggest shoulds that I have is uh, in decluttering is um, sentimental value. If someone gave me something, especially if someone I love gave me that thing, I just feel like, even though I know I'm not going to wear that thing or I don't really, that thing's not super me. That person loved me enough to give it to me. And I just, I, my heart breaks to think of getting rid of it. 
Yeah, no, that's super common for so many people. And what I like about the KonMari method is that it's five categories and you do them in order. And so it's clothing, then books, then paper, then kimono, which is like the Japanese word for miscellaneous kind of bathroom, kitchen, all that other stuff. And then sentimental is last so that you're kind of kicking the can the whole way down. Like a lot of people will be like, oh, I need to declutter. Let me start with my grandmother's tea set, you know, and it's like, you know, everything just kind of short circuits. But if you go through and you do those easier categories, we're kind of gathering the sentimental stuff as we go along. And then once you get there, you find that you're much more ready to let go of things that don't spark joy. Like if you lost your father passed or something like that, and there's a box filled in a dusty closet of all of his things, and you feel like you're supposed to keep, you should keep all of those things. But what if the one thing in that box is like his camera that he took pictures of all the time? What if you just kept that one thing and dusted it off and put it up on the mantle and let go of the rest, you know, like that? And then like, let it breathe instead of it being a box of shoulds in the corner. It's like a conversation piece that's now, you know, something that you can look at and admire. So I, I think keeping things to the end and reviewing them is awesome. But also I'm a huge proponent of like the big old fashioned memory box. Like if you have things that you feel guilty about getting rid of, but that spark joy, like, you know, those old movies, eighties movies where they go up to the attic and they're (laughs) going to like the wood chest with the letters and the ribbons. Like you can have that if you really want to, like Marie Kondo is not going to give you like a violation. (laughs) Oh my gosh. You know what I have, Amanda? I still have um, notes that were passed to me in like grade six. Like I have one that says, like, will you be my girlfriend? Check box. Yes for yes. And no. Oh my gosh. (laughs) I know. I'm horrible. You would, um, you would have a a field day if you came into my world, either digitally or in real life. And so is the process the same for everybody? You do the, the piles of the clothes, you do it by category, or do you have to tailor your process for people depending on where they're at in life, what they, what they need. If it's, for example, after a downsize or, you know. Yeah. Typically we do follow that order just because it works. You know, it's just such a roadmap. Like a lot of times what I've seen that people like about your program, for example, they're like, just tell me what to do and I'll do it. You know, like, don't confuse me with a lot of other options, you know, just tell me what to eat, tell me what to work. And so that's how this is too. It's just like such a clear roadmap for them and for me. Now, if for some reason, yeah, exactly. They have, they need to downsize or, you know, they need to be able to get their two cars in the garage or something like that. We can kind of reorder things. But I find that um, a lot of times it's more like the emotional journey that we have to go to through that's so important. And each of those different steps kind of take you on that psychological journey. It's it's so interesting. It's about so much more than the stuff. Yeah. How often do you find yourself playing therapist? Oh, all the time. I'm like an unlicensed therapist, essentially. (laughs) Because we're talking about like divorce and marriage and parenting and job loss loss and grief grief. And um people tell they invite me into their homes and they tell me everything, you know, and it's like it's amazing. I feel so honored that they trust me with that, you know. And that's why I'm kind of a one person team, because I'm like, I don't even I can't imagine sending somebody else into you know what I mean? It just feels like such a sacred thing. But yeah. Um, I was interested. I like when you said, if you have your father's camera, don't leave it all stuffed in with a bunch of, you know, his old ties and all that stuff like that. Take the camera out, give it some space to breathe. And as yeah. I remember it, it's been a while since I've read um, the book, but there was a sense of animism, right? She's known for that, yes. for uh, saying like, thank the socks for the job that they've done. You love these things and you thank them for their duty and you let them go. Can you talk about that sense of animism and uh, how it informs your work or how it helps people? Yeah. You know, it's really funny. She feels very strongly about socks and she really doesn't want us to roll our socks because she feels like it's like sock torture. (laughs) And I think that's such a beautiful part of it is that um, sort of gratitude of that sort of Eastern culture. And even the folding, when I'm teaching my clients the folding, it isn't this idea of like, we'll do this and do this and do this. It's like, you're touching your clothes. You're feeling them. This is a piece of clothing that you've decided sparks joy for you. So you're taking care of it. And you're showing it gratitude and folding becomes almost more like a meditative process than just like a something to get done. And so I think like just 
this idea of it's kind of like everything has energy and everything's in your life for a reason. Um, I think is such a beautiful, beautiful way of thinking about it. I mean, like, like, look at this, like, this is like a hedgehog tape dispenser. Mm-hmm. I mean, how yes, freaking is. fun is that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and that's it has like joy. little, yeah, it sparks joy for me. It has washi tape and like, I just, I don't know. It has kind of energy to me and I love that. Can you tell a story um, of anyone that you worked with where this process and going through this and this decluttering and this releasing of things really improved their quality of life? One client who had been through a really rough divorce, had had a difficult marriage, difficult divorce, and she wanted me to work with her and we were working in her bedroom. And she was like, I just don't know what is off in here with this bedroom. I just can't figure it out. I just like, oh, I just, I don't know. I I can't figure it out. As we're going through her stuff, she still had like lingerie left over. Like that was a wedding gift for that marriage that had caused her so much pain and for that divorce. But it was a should. Like this was a wedding gift. And so you keep it and you keep it in your lingerie drawer. And having that conversation with her of like, guess what? You don't have to keep it. (laughs) It's like, what? I can let go of this. And that prompted her to get a new bedspread and to get new curtains and to notice that there was actually like a nest of baby birds outside of her window and things like that. And I felt like for her, she kind of reclaimed her identity as like a woman standing on her own feet and not a woman who was the result of a failed marriage or whatever it was that she had in her mind. And so a lot of times it's just really subtle shifts like that. Or I worked with a mom who, you know, small townhouse, um, two little kids had like that island. You know how people have a kitchen island and it's just like it becomes just like the mound. And every single day the kitchen island would be the mound. She was even exploring and doing a kitchen renovation, spending, you know, $60,000 on a kitchen renovation. By the time we were done, she had empty drawers all over her kitchen. And that island is always clear. And what a lot of people say to me is like, this island is my brain. So when it looks like that, that is what my brain feels like. And when it looks clear, that is what my brain feels like. And so for me, I always try to work with people that I really admire. And so I'm always trying to, like, how can I clear that island? How can I clear that brain for you so that you can go off and do the amazing work that you do? This podcast is made possible by Fit Feels Good, my online fitness and nutrition company. Here's what we do. I have so many incredible benefits from the MFA program. It literally changed my life. I have the book, Healthy AF. I'm absolutely in love with my life now. I find that the healthy habits that I built are amazing to go back to. The benefits that you're going to see as a woman in your 40s plus are things you could have never imagined. The key, which I know Una talks about over and over again, is loving your body now, not what you're envisioning it to be. Hey, hey, if you're liking this podcast, you might also like my book, Healthy as Fuck. It's an international bestseller and available wherever books are sold. The audiobook is especially awesome, if I do say so myself. And listen, if you go to fitfeelsgood.com slash healthy AF, I've got a ton of free bonuses for book readers. So make sure you grab those too. Okay, back to the episode. Okay, now I want to shift you to digital because I often say... I feel like my brain has too many tabs open, which is actually in reality, I usually have all of the tabs open. (laughs) Um, So tell me, and especially when it comes to applying these principles of the KonMari method, like sparking joy, like do files spark joy? You know what I mean? And and the the animism and stuff, like, do you apply all those things to your digital process? I mean, less so, but still the, the idea of sparking, like when I say my clients are like, oh my God, I mean, I'm having fun. I'm having my fun in my email because I'm showing them things. Like we have these tools that are so powerful. Like I just got a MacBook. I used to be a PC person, but now I have Mac. Do you have PC or Mac? Mac. Yeah. Um, I was always afraid of it. And now I'm like, where has this been my whole life? Like I love it so much because once I learn how to make it work for me, it makes my life so seamless and so much easier. So even just te- teaching people the simplest things like, oh, did you know that you can drag this folder over to the sidebar and it will be in your favorites so that you can access it at all times? People are like, 
like they've been banging their head against the wall trying. And they also feel like, what's wrong with me? Why can't I figure this out? You know, and so a lot of times that's why I'm so freaking proud of my clients when they reach out to me that they wave the white flag because nobody ever taught us how to organize our email. Nobody ever taught us how to organize our files and our folders. I mean, you may have gotten, you know, early days in your job, you know, teaching that kind of stuff, but nobody really taught us how to do this. So everybody just kind of bangs their head against the wall trying to figure it out. Um, And I think what doesn't spark joy is having a crazy email inbox and having files and folders everywhere and not being able to find anything and having to reset your passwords all the time. And what does spark joy is being able to just get in there, find what you need, use the tools the way that you want to, and like get on with your day. Oh, you bring up such a good point that we were all taught to some degree how to organize our spaces as we were little kids, you know, make your bed and put your laundry away or whatever. Um, Mm -hmm. But yeah, digitally, like no one was taught that. I I was thinking, I was like, who was my first digital teacher? And I was like, oh, it was like Clippy, you know, the little animated (laughs) clip guy. He was so annoying. He was like super (laughs) helpful. It looks like you're writing a letter. (laughs) Really, I don't think I've had any mentorship on that ever since. Yeah, no, I think I had some early mentorship that was incredibly helpful with like Microsoft Outlook and things like that and how to do that. But and we would have some productivity experts that would come in occasionally, but it's just the silliest thing. Like, for example, and Adam Grant even wrote a book about this, or maybe it was an article, but he talked about how a lot of people just accept the default. So like if you get a laptop and it just has Safari on it as a browser, you just use Safari. You don't know that maybe Chrome exists and that could be a better option or whatever. So for example, in your Gmail, which so many people use, they use the default way that their inbox can be organized, but they don't know that it can actually be organized in a totally different way, which is called priority inbox. And usually when I show clients that they're just, it's like a drop the mic moment. They're like, oh my God, it's the simplest, smallest little tweaks that they're like, oh my God, this is going to make my life so much easier. So how deep do you go? You'll go into my inbox, help me organize that. And I assume you'll, you'll help me sort out my desktop and Mm -hmm. all, you know, the filing system within, you know, on my hard drive. I'm guessing you'll do that. Mm -hmm. What Mm -hmm. do you do people's social? Like, would you help me go into my Instagram and help me clear out accounts that don't spark joy? Do you do that? Yeah, for sure. Wow. Yeah. It's a very, Yeah, it's very much like a choose your own adventure type of thing. So people will come to me, the kind of the top three things that people want to talk to me about is email, files, and passwords. But we, passwords, I know. (laughs) That's a weird (laughs) thumbs up thing. It does that sometimes. Um, I Yeah, passwords are a killer. And a lot of times, you know, we get them set up with a system called like one password or something like that. Life changing, so helpful. But I have people that come to me. I had a client recently. It was like, okay, listen, I have two phones. One is a work phone. One is a personal phone. I want to switch my personal phone to my work phone. So I've got to migrate the numbers and two different Apple IDs. And how are we going to do this? And one is company and one is personal. And we worked through that together or I know. Um, (laughs) And I, because she's just like, I, I can't do this alone. I have no idea. And we just go step by step by step or it could be, you know, I don't understand why, you know, my photos on my computer are one thing, but then my photos on my phone are another thing. And what am I paying Apple plus for? And what does that give me? So like just a lot of just stuff like that. The only thing that I don't really cover is like something's wrong with my computer. I have a right. virus yeah. or something. I'm like, okay, just call the geek squad for that. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't, you know. It seems, you know, as you're talking, I'm reminded of some skits where they have, you know, the boomer parent calling their millennial <laughs> child to be like, well, the thing's not doing the thing. <laughs> I mean, is that, do you do, you do a lot of that yeah, sort of work? Yeah, for sure. And I think like, it's funny because my mom, she like brings her friends over here to be like, Amanda, we'll help you. And I'm like, don't you have kids? Like, and they're like, yeah, but you're more patient. I think I am patient. I kind of treat all my clients as if they're kind of that boomer parent. And I'll ask them like, do you know about Gmail priority inbox? Because I never want to, you know, if they do, then, you know, I don't want to start too one-on-one, but I've been going pretty 101, really slow. And even for 20 year olds, 30 year olds, 40 year olds, 50 year olds, like that's what they need. They need a slower pace of me, not just like clicking around being like, well, do this and do this and do this. We go pretty slow. Yeah. And that's what people really need. 
Uh, I have a cute boomer technology story. My mom and her friends, when Uber first kind of came out, they were all, you know, out on the town coming back from a play or something like that. And they went to get an Uber and they were like, okay, let's do it. And they signed up to be Uber drivers. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. What about pictures? That's another huge area of clutter for me. Yes. Digital clutter. Yes. So with pictures, I like to teach people what their phones and their software can do. Because in the old days, I feel like we used to try to create all these folders of like, this was the folder for Tulum and this was the folder for Mallorca. But now the the phones and everything are so smart that they'll find all that stuff for you. So really helping people to understand like when you go into this little search button, it'll give you all of the pictures of your dad or all of the pictures of your best friend, or it knows all of the pictures that you took in Tulum. And so you can go and do that. And there's also apps that will delete blurry images, delete duplicates, um, you know, I always say like, you don't need 77 pictures of the aardvark, you know, like you went to the zoo with your kid and you're just like, aardvark, 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 like <laughs> <laughs> going through and clearing out a bunch of those. Um, and there's apps that will help you do that. But I like similar to like the example of the dad's camera in the dusty box. So many of our photos get in here and they never see the light of day again. So I love to get people set up with things like there's a company called chat books, which is so great. All you do is it's an app on your phone. You cook a favorite on a photo. It sends it to the app. When you get to 60 photos, you get a photo album in your mailbox. And it has on the spine the date of the photos and when they were taken. And it's just like total, you know, good enough-ish photo albums. And my daughter flips through them. She takes them to school. They're adorable. So I help people like get their photos back into kind of the late of day too. That's so interesting to me, especially because um, some other decluttering fanatics that I know, what they mm. do is they take things in the real world and they move it to the digital world. So mm. for example, a friend of mine, whenever her daughter brings home a piece of art, she's like, great, let's take a picture. And now we chuck it. <laughs> so yes. um, you gave an example of taking something from the digital world and moving it to the physical. How do you help people figure out where things should go as far as digital and physical, as far as reducing clutter overall? Yeah, for sure. And I love that you said that because I actually use chat books to when my when my daughter was really young and it felt like she every day she was coming home with some sort of like hand turkey or yeah. something, you know, like <laughs> um, I would take a picture of it and it would actually go into the chat books album just as a, you know, in chronological order of whatever else was going on. And so that was really fun. So I will have people like, for example, I had a client who was a producer at an event the, like a concert venue. And so she had an entire dresser full of like 250 concert t-shirts and she didn't actually want 250 concert t-shirts, but she wanted the, the, the graphics and the, the, the dates and all that kind of stuff. So she made an, an album taking pictures of her graphic t-shirts and things like that. So a lot of times for sentimental items, that's a great thing to do. The things that you're kind of sad to let go of, you can take a picture of the zebra lamp that your aunt Betty gave you. And you're like, <laughs> oh, look, I remember the zebra lamp. But And then kind of keep it in some sort of sentimental way, but you don't necessarily need to, to hold on to it. Hmm, I think you're underestimating how much joy a zebra lamp would spark for me. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, why would anyone ever get rid of yeah, a zebra lamp? That sounds amazing. Um, <laughs> however, so here's what I'm wondering about the digital, especially moving from physical to digital as an answer. Okay. Because Con Murray, if I'm remembering this right, part of the method is you actually have to hold the item to see if it sparks joy. You can't just think about it. You have to hold it. I am I right about this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And obviously with the digital, we're not holding anything. So that hand turkey, we're going to take a picture and it's chucked and you're never going to hold it again. And this is, you know, all my notes from grade six. There is something I love about the tactile of them. And I'm I'm, I'm open to you saying, get the fuck over it. <laughs> but I'm wondering what Comrie would say about the benefits of a tactile physical thing that brings us joy versus moving it to the physical uh, digital. I mean, I think those things still spark joy for you. So you just keep them because you enjoy the tactile of it, you know, and how crinkled and old and the paper that you were using then and the pens and yeah. whatever it was, you know, like that sparks joy for you. I think a lot of times it's for things like, you know, those 250 t-shirts, she didn't necessarily oh, yeah. need to touch them and to feel them. But what was sparking joy was the information that was captured in those. So, you know, you... um 
you know, so if it, if it's a hand turkey that you love and you want to see and feel and the crinkled paper and all of that kind of stuff, because it is very like choose your own adventure. I mean, I saved a piece of napkin that my first kiss threw at me <laughs> at an event. Like I saved this napkin. Do you still have it? No, I got rid of it in some KonMari, you know, adventure yeah. that I was on. But if I had taken a picture of that, that would have been really lame. I don't think a picture of a napkin would have done anything for me. I wanted the actual physical napkin. Right. And I got to a point where I didn't need it anymore. But so I think it's just very much as dependent on the thing and the item and like not following the shoulds like, oh, Una, this is so ridiculous for you to keep the sixth grade note. Well, like says who? I'd love to hear. You mentioned a few great apps and uh, tricks and techniques that you use for people's digital worlds. And actually, can you just explain the process? So I will share my screen with you and reveal all of my shame. And then you will say, <laughs> let's make a big pile of those documents and go through them one by one. Oh, God, that just sounds like hell. Tell me how it's not hell. Yeah. <laughs> when we're doing the digital, we're basically just focusing on your digital. So you're not going to be making a pile of your clothing or anything like that. Okay. Yeah. So that's kind of like, that's more virtual organizing where I would be helping you organize your home virtually. This is, I'm helping you organize your digital world. Okay. So it's four sessions, um, usually four one hour ish sessions. The first session is when you would kind of lay it all out for me, show me all your shame. And we, I would get to see, you know, what does your desktop what look like? What is your current email situation? And then usually we'll decide like, where do you want to dive in? Um, and a lot of times we get started in that first session. So I'll say, okay, we're going to reorganize your email inbox, or we're going to start working on getting you set up with Dropbox or whatever it is. And then you'll have some homework. And then we meet again for two, three and four sessions. And like, we just keep diving in and you can message me in the middle, like, Amanda, I don't understand what you meant about doing this. And I use a really cool tool called Loom where I can record my desktop and show you, oh, all you have to do is click here and here. And there was a little portal where people can rewatch the videos. So yeah. Do you have stories from people who have gone through this process and it completely changed their productivity or their happiness? I mean, we'll see. I just actually launched the service two months ago. Wow. So it's a very new service, but I have people that are already nearing the end of their, and they're emailing me like, this is life changing because it's people that, you know, I have somebody that I'm working with who is caring for an older woman or, or is caring for her mother who has Alzheimer's, who's living in a different country, has two young children, is running a business that's still, you know, kind of recovering from COVID. And so her day to day stress was, oh my God, I can't find these emails. And that she was the one that was working through the work phone and the, and it was just like, I just, I need help. I can't figure these things out. And now she feels so much more on the other side of it. And um, it's really, really cool to see. Oh, I can't, I can't imagine how much time it would save and sanity it would save. <laughs> I'm going to shock you and let you know how deep this goes for me. My team <laughs> doesn't really like me to use our team drives and stuff because they know I'm not going to put it in the right spot. It's kind, of, <laughs> right. it's kind of like when my husband, when we first got together, I was like, I'm going to make you dinner. And he was like, oh, actually, I'll do it. I thought he was just being really sweet, but he just did not want me in the kitchen because I'm so messy. So that's, that's kind of how amazing. my team is about me putting stuff in our drive. And when I go in there to try and find something, there's so often I'm like, I know I've written an email about this. I know yes. I've created that promotional material and I have no idea where it is. Yeah. yeah. I was talking with a client this week who he's a founder and CEO of his own nonprofit. He has a team of like 35 different people and he has a one-year-old and a four-year-old. Like he's busy, you know, and he's basically like, my team just keeps emailing me over and over and over and over again, asking me for the same thing because they know I lost that email, you know? And I'm like, well, where do you keep your to do's? He's like, nowhere, you know? And so he, he said, it's like really affecting my company, my mental health, my team morale, you know, like, so it, it has an enormous impact. Oh, I, I think people. the service is going to be huge. I, I think this is yeah. because we underestimate we I mean, the truth is we spend most of our lives in the digital world these days. Yeah, for sure. And like for you, for example, like I teach clients like to have like a naming convention. So like, for example, I was just, I had to send my daughter's health assessment somewhere. So it's like the naming convention is like 2023.12.12 health assessment Isabel. Right. And that goes in the Isabel folder right. under health assessment. So it is that like... um 
you know, and you have to follow the rules and you do have to be kind of di- um, diligent about it. It's kind of like, and you're, like the workout isn't going to do itself. You know what I mean? Like you're telling me <laughs> to work like, out. Hit me where it hurts and here. The, oh, I know. <laughs> like the workout isn't going to do it, it itself. So yeah. it's like, it's kind of, it's hard for you, but you will have some habit forming that will have to happen in order for it to be less, less hard. And perhaps like my crazy clients are saying, maybe even fun. Have you noticed when people make this transformation, because I can see that it would really change the world, have you noticed them have it bleed over into their life in other ways, like any other personal growth or mindset shifts as they go through the organizing process? Yeah, I have a lot of people that, you know, they'll reach out and say something like, I know that I need to change careers, but I can't do it until my house is is decluttered. Like there's a funny Gretchen Rubin joke that's like, I decluttered my refrigerator and now I can leave my husband. It's like, like now that I've done this major thing. So I do feel like for a lot of people, it is, it's like this cleansing top to bottom process where you have to clear out your mind before you can make kind of that next big step for. So for a lot of people, it will be, you know, like I have people that come up to me after my keynote talks and they'll be, cause I talk about what should, are you going to let go of? And they'll look at me with like tears in their eyes. Like, I know what should I have to let go of. Like, I'm not going to tell you what it is, but I know what it is. And I imagine that it is, you know, a relationship or a job or whatever it is. And so I feel like when people go through that really cathartic physical process of clearing, it's like, it's like a, it's like a time machine of your whole life. Not a time machine. What's that word when you bury things? Time capsule. Um, Time capsule. It's like a time capsule of your whole life. And when you go through and you declutter that and you clear that out, it provides like an enormous amount of brain power to focus on other things. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that. Um, I know that people are going to want to hear more from you and I know you have a podcast called, is it good enough? Good enough ish. Good enough ish. (laughs) (laughs) So good. So tell us, um, tell us what does that mean to be good enough ish? Yeah. So it's a podcast that I host with my friend, Brooke Forey. We've been doing it for almost two years. Um, and we're having a blast. We're in the top 15% of podcasts, which is really fun. Um, so it's called the Good Enough-ish Podcast. And it's really just this idea of letting go of perfectionism, like finding the humor and the fun and being more authentically ourselves in this kind of busy crazy, strange world. Um, And it's become kind of a catchphrase, just like, okay, good enough-ish, you know, like we'll record our podcast and the audio might not be perfect. And it's like, good enough-ish. You know, (laughs) I was actually reading a quote the other day that I'm like, I don't think Una said this, but it sounds like Una should have said this, which is it's okay to suck. It's not okay to not show up. Yeah, like And I think that's so much of like, like the other day, I didn't feel like working out. I didn't want to do your workout, but I just told my daughter, I'm like, we're going to do this. I know that never (laughs) happens. Like we're going to do this workout and we're going to suck at it. And we're just going to show up and we're going to suck. And how did it go? It was so much fun. And my abs were killing the next day. So something happened. (laughs) (laughs) It's true. Yes. I love that. Give yourself permission to suck and just show up. And the, the thing is that what happens is once you show up, you will probably suck less than you think you do. That's the, that is the yeah. benefit of our big, beautiful egos is that we do. Uh, we will hardly ever allow ourselves to suck as much as we have the intention of sucking. Right, right. So it's fun. It's it's a nice, easy listen because we divide it up into a couple different segments. One is kind of like the main topic. So today we recorded and we were talking all about like how to make your holiday more fun and easy. And then we talk about what's sparking joy for you right now. And I always joke, like it could be like, rain boots or spackle. Like you never know what the heck is sparking joy for somebody. And then we have a little segment that's what are you doing to do your future self a favor? Hmm. So um, yeah, that's a lot of fun. Um, Can I just end with asking you a bit of a woo-woo question? I think that some people aren't connected to what sparks joy for them. I think a lot of people would hold on to something like this fabulous hat that I have that says today is going to be a good day. (laughs) And they wouldn't know that this is an amazing hat and that it should spark a lot of joy. Like they'll just hold it and they'll be like, I don't know, it's a hat. It feels like a foam hat to me. How, how do you help people connect to their sense of what sparks joy? Yeah. Um, I will have clients that reach out to me that are like, nothing sparks joy. Yeah. And that's a sad place to be in. And it's a place that I've been in before too. And that's a place that I've been in before I left my, you know, like really stressful job with a really long commute where I was in a place where it was like nothing sparks joy. And so that's where the unlicensed therapist in me comes out where we talk about like, 
you know, well, yes, we can talk about this shirt and I can help you dive in deeper a little bit on like, we'll tell that. And so a lot of times it's asking questions like, well, tell me more, like, tell me more, why, why this shirt doesn't spark joy. Well, I don't know. It's just like, all of my stuff is so boring and I'm totally overweight and none of this stuff fits me and it's really uncomfortable or whatever. And so then you're talking about something else. You're talking about weight, you're talking about body image, or I don't know, you know, they just kind of go on and on. So we're learning a little bit more like what is the, the blockage. But then also I talk to people about like, well, have you talked to a therapist? Have you got set, gotten set up with a therapist? Or, you know, like, have you been diagnosed with ADHD? I have a lot of clients that are banging their heads against the wall. And to me, I'm like, this looks a lot like ADHD, but they're blaming themselves. Like, why can't I get my act together? Well, it might just be because your brain functions in a different way, you know? So helping direct people to resources to help them get to a place where things can spark joy and they can better um, identify with what sparks joy for them. Hmm, I like that. Um, Can I ask you about the ADHD for a second? If someone is feeling like I just cannot get it and they're blaming themselves and you suspect that it does sound like ADHD, what can someone who has a diagnosis of ADHD do to support themselves in this kind of process? Yeah, it's interesting because I keep referring like I probably have ADHD and I need to go and get myself evaluated for it just so that I know that I do have it. But I think a lot of things that's really helpful with me with clients is that it's really easy for somebody to say like, you should go get evaluated for ADHD. But probably what I will do is actually sit down with them and be like, let's Google people in your area that do evaluations of people for ADHD. Could we call them now? Mm, wow. What about if we call them now? What if we go on and check your insurance and see what's covered? Because in our podcast, we talk a lot of times about friction. And when there's friction in something, then you're going to do everything that you, it's, it's preventing you from doing something. So like with the workout, like I had some friction in my house because I didn't have a place to work out. Yeah. And so that was the excuse every single day. Well, I don't have a place. I don't have a place. It was the friction. So I had to remove that friction. If I just said to somebody, well, you should probably get evaluated for ADHD. I know they're not going to because there's six steps that's involved in that. And if you have ADHD, you're not necessarily going to do that. So a lot of times in everything with the digital decluttering and the in-person, it's usually identifying what is the first step. So for example, like if you have a bill, a medical bill, and it's like, oh, the task is to figure this medical bill out. It's wrong. That's not a task. The task is call this 1-800 number and ask them, blah, 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 Yeah. right? So just helping people figure out what is the exact first step because that's where people get stuck. Hmm, that is such a great service to help people figure out what is the first step because I'm sure almost everyone comes to you absolutely overwhelmed. And if you just give them the first step, you're giving them such a gift. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're just like, just tell me where to start. Just tell me, what, like like people say, just tell me what to do and I'll do it. That's right. I hear that all the time. Oh my goodness. I mean, I love this conversation so much. Thank you for the personal therapy. I appreciate it. <laughs> Unlike, you get what you pay for. Unlights this therapist over here. That's awesome. And one of these days, I will be brave enough to share my screen with you. I really want to see it. I oh. might make you watch. Show. I might make you show it to me when ah, we hang up here. That's Okay. <laughs> and Amanda, I know, so the listeners know about your awesome podcast, Good Enough-ish. And can you tell um, them also where to get in touch with you, learn more from you? And I believe that you're even generous enough to offer them a discount code. Yes. So they can find the podcast at goodenoughish.com. And they can find me if they want to learn more specifically about this digital offering, they can go to indigoorganizing.com slash digital. And I've got a little special surprise for your listeners. So with code grit, they get 10% off either of the plans, the pay in full or the payment plan. That is so generous. Thank you so much. I think I'm going to take you up on that. I really yeah. enjoyed talking that with you today. That applies to you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Hey, dude, what did you think of that interview? I think I honestly am going to take her up on that offer. Uh, Let me know if you are going to as well. And let me know what you thought of the episode. As always, I'm so interested to hear what sparks joy for you when it comes to this podcast. So send me a DM uh, on Instagram at Una Duncan. And I'll see you next week. Bye. Hey, dude, thanks for listening. If you like this episode, make sure you're subscribed so you can get the next one. And by the way, if you rate and review this podcast, it really helps me get found by other people who need some goals, grit, and some woo-woo shit. And be sure to connect and DM me at Una Duncan on Instagram and let me know what you thought of the episode. Chat soon.